Hi. Welcome back or welcome to My Name is Emily. Welcome back and welcome to My Name is Emily. You called your show My Name is Emily. Alright, I'm sure you had your reasons. Today we are talking about feminism, specifically intersectional feminism. Yes, I'd like my bullshit with a side order of bullshit, please. The term that I've seen popping up over the past year or so. Yeah, one feminist has a brain fart and the rest of you flock to it like flies on shit. I did not know what it was, so I did a little bit of research and I want to share with you what I found in my personal idea of what an intersectional feminist is. Your own personal idea about what it is. You just said you did research. Well, I'm sure you'll tell us with the links and sources to this research you did. Oh. Oh, I guess not. Because I think that this idea is very, very important. So let's begin. What the fuck is an intersectional feminist? It's, um... It's a retard, is, is what it is. I think I'm gonna try and be a little nicer to this girl, because apparently she's very emotional. I, uh... I like your neck, mole. It's essentially the idea that not every woman on the planet is middle class, size gendered, and white. Well, what do you know? You're right. Not every woman on the planet is white and middle class. Well done. Go and give yourself a woman's studies doctorate for that one. Not every woman on the planet falls into a majority in the rest of their lives, and that affects how they approach feminism and their gender. Yeah, you've already got that woman's study degree in the bag, don't oversell it now. It's the same basic concept as feminism, that all women should be equals in this world. Yeah, that's generally people's problem with feminism. All women should be equal, but over men. Saying that all women, no matter skin color, age, class... I agree. People shouldn't be discriminated against because of their age, skin color, or class. But you said women, so is it alright to discriminate against men on these factors in your handbook? Disability, sexuality, or gender identification. Speaking of gender identification, you have no idea how many attack helicopters watch my videos. Deserves to be heard understood and supported. No one deserves that. Nothing deserves to be rammed down somebody else's throat until they just accept it. I'll let you make up your own tasteless rape jokes, your squadron of attack helicopters, you. And as feminists, we must be the ones who stand up and say, yes, I will protect these people and I will support these people in my community because everyone deserves love and respect. No one deserves love and respect. Get your head out of your ass and wake up. And when you say you defend these people, given you advertise your too many feelings and your mental health problems, as if they're some kind of badge of honour, I think the only thing you've ever defended is your dinner plate. Intersectionality is actually a term that was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw back in 1989. Theory. That's rich. I looked up who she was talking about and, well, I've started drinking and it's still the morning. She's a professor in a law school, which is impressive, but she specializes in race and gender issues. Go figure. Crenshaw developed a theory surrounding overlapping social identities and how that relates to systems of oppression and discrimination. I'm thinking of starting a drinking game about feminist videos. When you hear a buzzword, take a drink. But I don't want to be the cause of people dying from alcohol poisoning. The textbook definition of intersectional feminism is that it's the idea that women all experience oppression differently. And as we all know, dictionary definitions are the holy grail to feminists. Unless, of course, it's sexism, racism, or gender. In which case, oh, it's only the dictionary, it's not real life. Fucking morons. In varying configurations and degrees of intensity. Cultural patterns of oppression are not only interrelated, but are bound together and influenced by the intersectional systems of society. I've already had a few at this point, so let me wrap my head around this. Systems of oppression, which are still to be proven, by the way, are not only interrelated, but are bound together by the intersectional systems of society. Well, that sounds backwards even for your logic. Surely it would be the lack of intersectionality in society that would cause this mystical oppression you're all banging on about. Not the intersectionality itself, because if that was the case, then feminism would cause oppression. So you basically just admitted that feminism causes minorities to suffer. Good job. I bet feminists sleep soundly knowing you're on the case. In other words, no two people have the same experience with adversity. As a bisexual woman, I have a very different experience than a straight woman. And as an American, I have a very different experience than a woman who's living under Sharia law. If you think this is news to us, I have no idea how you managed to dress yourself this morning. 
So my question will be, why are you bitching about the society you live in? The society where you have it pretty damn easy, and not trying to help those women that live under Sharia law like you mentioned. Just a thought. Woman on the planet deserves love, respect, and understanding. You don't. You're so backwards, you've fallen so deep into the well of feminist idiocy that you deserve nothing more than my contempt, and believe me, you have it. As individuals in our own particular set of circumstances, we all have unique experiences and insights. This whole state and the obvious thing is starting to get real fucking tedious. Of course everyone has their own insights and their own opinions. Fucking retard. No one has ever claimed they don't. Therefore, we must be aware of the multifaceted experiences of the woman, and remember that their perspective from within this adversity is the most valuable. That's your entire job? That explains a lot. As a white, bisexual woman, it is my job to understand my privilege and use it to lift the voices of women who are being pushed aside. If you find it complicated, there's nothing anyone can do for you. You're beyond hope. I'm stunned at how you've taken three minutes of your video just to say, listen to coloured women. Oh, sorry, women of colour. I always get those mixed up. I'll cut her video off here because I think my head's going to implode if I listen to any more of her witless prattle. So, dear viewers, what criticism could you level at this lovely specimen of a feminist? I'll put the ones that make me laugh the most at the end of my next video. And as always, thank you for your time.